Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of The Sand Report. Um, if you're wondering why this show is not live, I'm actually recording it on Thursday night because I am taking Friday off. And as much as I, I love working uh, every day of the week, I am actually trying to legitimately take tomorrow off. So uh, that's, me and that's why I'm doing this tonight. And I love doing this, and I love getting the feedback and all that good stuff, and I didn't want to skip a week. And so here we are. Uh, Thursday night pre-recorded show, but good stuff as always. And granted, it is the week before Christmas. Uh, everybody, I hope you have a happy holiday this weekend, no matter what you're celebrating. Christmas, Hanukkah, I think Kwanzaa's going on now. Uh, whatever it is you may be celebrating, I hope you have a good time and you get to spend time with family, friends, enjoy some good food, some good drink, and whatever it else it is that you do. But there is some stuff that did go on in this week in the world of technology, specifically Microsoft. A um, couple little insider things that I got tipped off about. Uh, we'll kick it off here, and I, I haven't quite dug to the bottom of this yet, but somebody uh, quite literally sent me a tip late on Thursday afternoon that said, hey, they signed up for the Wonderlist beta, and the app that Microsoft told them to download is actually Project Cheshire. So if you remember uh, that Cheshire app that I've written up about uh, several times over, or, or, I don't know, over the past couple months, it's, it's a to-do list based app and everyone's kind of wondering what this thing is. And so if this holds true, it, it genuinely looks like this is the next iteration of Wonderlist. Uh, and it appears that they've basically started from scratch all over again. Um, I, I don't have any other confirmation on it, but if you are using this app or have signed up for the Wonderlist beta, key, let me know what you see. I, I'm very curious to see if Microsoft really is rebuilding Wonderlist from the ground up. Um, Seems like a lot of work, and then why did they buy it? I, I don't know. Did they buy it for the user base? Um, it's, it's a little baffling. It honestly really, really is. But anyways, Project Cheshire very well could be the next uh, Wonderlist replacement, and it is coming, so keep your eyes open for that kind of stuff. Uh, other kind of insidery things that I got tipped off about this week. Um, the next update to Windows 10, as we've talked about many, many times, is called the Creators Update, uh, codenamed Redstone 2. And for those who like to know uh, planning and that kind of stuff, what's going on inside the world of Microsoft, uh, mid uh, in the, I'm trying to figure out the best way to phrase this, it's in the middle, uh, technically in the middle of January, uh, the earlier half of middle, if that makes sense. Uh, Microsoft is considering that all the features need to be in on Redstone 2, meaning that all the code has to be in, everything needs to be there, and then they're going to kind of hit a lockdown period. Uh, a little bit later because they're going to give, I believe it's UI components and UI infrastructure and that kind of stuff, uh, like another week or 10 days or so after all the underlying features are done to kind of wrap all that stuff up. And then it goes into bug bashing mode. And what I'm trying to say here is that in the month of January, Redstone 2 will be completed. Now, when I say completed, I don't mean shipped and ready and done. I mean, it'll be feature locked or feature complete at that point. And then they will go into a mode where they will just be trying to uh, make it I don't know, production ready. And so what will happen is then another six to eight weeks, roughly, that's a very, very rough timeline. It could be long, it could be longer. It could be a lot longer for all that we know um, to get all the bugs, get it streamlined, get it optimized, get it fun and ready and get it ready to ship in the spring that Microsoft has already promised as the creators update. So just to kind of reiterate middle of January Code has to be done. Infrastructure stuff has to be done. Uh, a little bit later, about a week or 10 days later, the UI components have to be done. And then it's bug smash time. And then it ships. So we're quickly approaching, uh, you know, the last of the features for the creators update. Which, what this really means for insiders is that, hey, the next couple updates are probably going to have a lot of changes. Hopefully, that should be a good thing. And then, uh, starting in the middle of January, what we're going to start to see are just uh, builds where... It, not a lot changes. It's really just bug smashing at that point. But it also like, generally means that we're going to see builds faster too. If you remember the last couple of times right before Microsoft ships an update, uh, what they do is... Uh, what, I totally lost my train of thought. What they do is they ship a whole bunch of builds really, really, really quick. And they go from there. So uh, that is what is going on in that arena. So keep your eyeballs open for that stuff. So... More builds coming uh, early next year is kind of the crux of that argument. Uh, other things that are going on, um, if you haven't been paying attention this week, Apple has been on a little interesting PR cycle. So <laughs> this happened, uh, what was this, on Wednesday. Uh, actually, uh, correct, correcting that, late Tuesday, 
word came out that an internal message was leaked or whatever. Tim Cook posted to an internal message board. And I'm going to paraphrase here. And he's saying that new products are coming for the Mac uh, and they have great things in store for the desktop. And it was just kind of one of those generic Apple PR plus uh, puff statements, but it wasn't really PR because it didn't go through the PR channel as an internal message word trying to reassure the troops. Now, jump ahead to Wednesday morning at about 6 or 6.30 a.m. Bloomberg posted up a story, a very interesting story. It says how Apple has kind of abandoned the Mac and that those teams aren't getting enough resources and that it's become it's been deprioritized at the company. And it's likely why, you know, it's been several years since the Mac Pro has been updated. Remember, they introduced it and it's basically sat stale. The Mac Mini hasn't been refreshed in a long time. Same with the desktop. The, the product, the desktop products have become stale. They finally did the MacBook Pro and reviews have been mixed. Um, the, the press, honestly, were a little bit more positive. The creative pros aren't as positive about it. So it's, it's kind of up in the air. Actually, fun fact, it came out today for the first time. Uh, Consumer Reports is not recommending the MacBook Pro because of inconsistent battery life. So that's a kind of an interesting take on it. But anyways, so the story comes out from Bloomberg. It says Apple is not giving the Mac as much love as it wants internally. And these were, they were citing internal sources talking about the Mac. And they had a very good expose about what is happening at Apple when it comes to their laptop. Not their laptops, but their desktops. Now, granted, the Mac computer is, I think, like 10% of their income. And the iPhone is just... The iPhone, I think, as a product on its own is, like, bigger than Microsoft. Um, it it's close. It's a huge revenue driver. And so obviously they put their focus there and blah, blah, blah. And so there's been, there's, there's been some sentiment lately that Apple has kind of abandoned the core audience with the Mac. And this story comes out from Bloomberg. And so, and so what I'm trying to point out here is that I guarantee, and I know this because Bloomberg said it, they, is what happens is, is when you have a story like this, and I've done it with Microsoft many times, when you have a scoop, or something like that, you're going to write an internal a post about internal sources, you go to the company and say, hey, can I get a comment on it about what I'm about to post? And so they sent that information to them probably on Tuesday, and Apple went, oh, crap, uh, and put out their own kind of internal thing, says, hey, the great stuff's coming for the Mac. And you can kind of see which publications got it leaked to. I don't know if it was like an intentional leak or whatever, but I know TechCrunch was one of them that says, hey, look, Apple has great stuff coming for the Mac. And then 12 hours later, Bloomberg comes out with a story about saying, hey, Apple's like not giving as much credit to the Mac teams or much resources to the Mac teams. So what happened here is Apple saw the story coming. They went, oh, crap. Uh, and then they put out their own PR cycle with their own internal messaging board post that they knew was going to be leaked. And, and then Bloomberg came out with their thing. So it's like all the people who wrote up that message board stuff kind of uh, took the bait, if you will, from Apple. And there you go. So that's just what's kind of, it's just been a kind of curious cycle. And the reason why it's, I find it curious is because Apple, like, why would a company uh, in the midst of the holiday shopping season put out a statement that says, hey, we, I know these new products are old. Uh, we got some new ones coming. Like, it, it's th like basically saying, hey, don't buy our products because we have new stuff coming. So that doesn't really jive. And you can tell it kind of felt forced and they were in, in a reactionary mode to all that good stuff. Um, other things that are going on this week, Microsoft landed a $927 million Pentagon contract. We don't really know what all that includes because it's government related and whatever, but for Microsoft, it's a nice Christmas present to get a contract from the government for $927 million. So there is that. Uh, and so this is obviously a lighter week, but I do want to, I do want to kind of raise a question here and i would love to get some honest to god uh reader feedback on this stuff what is the future of the live tile microsoft made a huge deal about the live tile and they're they're still present on the phone um i'm assuming they're going to be present on cellular pcs and tablets although there aren't really any many tablets i mean you could argue that the pro 4 is a tablet but i look at it more as like a pc or a laptop but anyways um when the live tiles were like ushered in they were like saying this is the new form factor, this is the new widget, and ever since they've been announced, they really haven't gotten out a lot of love. And the, and the anniversary update, they made uh, chaseable live tiles work, which means the content you see on the live tile when you click it, you can actually dive deep into that that respective app's content. So I guess there is some there, but we haven't really seen, especially in the creators update, really anything going on. We've never seen like I really there was a mock up at one time internally at Microsoft where they actually had live tiles on the desktop, but that doesn't work. Uh, at least not yet, because then you could use them like true widgets and they could just be open and present. But here we are. 
uh, why aren't the live tiles on the desktop? It just seems kind of obvious at this point. Uh, the, the, I don't know. What is my what is the future of the live tile? Where is it headed? What is Microsoft going to do with it? I've poked around a little bit and haven't really heard too much. Granted, they could still do something and pull it out and watch them. Next week, they're going to come with some big live tile update. But I haven't heard anything directly about the future of the live tile. But at this point, it's just kind of like the same thing that it is when they launched uh, back with Windows Phone. I mean, they've updated them a little bit, but not not anything dramatically. So if you have any hints about what the live, live tile should be or where they should go, I'd honestly love to hear them. But I don't know. I do not know. And so I'm going to end it here, guys. Like I said, this is a quick one. Uh, holiday week. I expect, honestly, expect next week. Although with... CES coming. Um, yeah, it, I don't know. There could be some stuff coming out next week, but you got to remember next week, tons and tons and tons of people are off work just the entire week. Like my wife is off the entire week. I know many people at Microsoft have the entire week off. So I can't imagine there's going to be any big news drops. We know there's not going to be any Windows 10 builds. But so my insider tip of the week is just, you know what, just disconnect, relax, and enjoy the holidays. Uh, we don't get this time too much to ourselves anymore and so i highly recommend that you know what just kick back put your feet up and don't worry about technology for once if you can i i'm it's ironic coming for me because i'm the exact opposite i always am tinkering and doing that kind of stuff but there you go kick your feet back relax and enjoy yourself and have a happy holidays and i always appreciate you guys watching and listening and i'll catch you next week